So now I'm going to introduce Alan Corbier. I would say he was quite valuable in regards to our litigation and providing the history. So I uh, introduce to you Alan and welcome him. Gajway Bak Ma Pim she came in his sing, Minwa Dashanga, Gatabatan, Gajway Bak Ma Pi uh Bao Ting Uh Nijing Dash Giwawinik uh Nish knows when an Mimeo Donan Ojik Minwa Dash uh Gaba Bamba Tot Bejik Gimishum Saba Gimishum Sabana Gawawinik so thank you. I want to know you me go to our conduct. Get the jick or gimma or gimma conduct. Eskini gijik again. Minua nijin is snabek. Nui me go to our conduct. Gunda and key jick. Skudek jick, pognag jick, deg jick. Minua nui go to our ga the gum to our what? Gunda geese son. Nanda geese son jeba. So I want to thank uh, all the organizers, and I want to thank you uh, for listening to me today. I got two Nishnabe names, and uh, one is uh, Ojik, and the other is Gaba Bamba Tot. Ojik is the fisher. Gaba Bamba Tot means the one who ran around. I will return to about names because I, I want to talk a bit about names. Anyway, I did want to talk. Uh, uh, thank I thanked the organizers, the workers for this, as well as the elders. And I also wanted to thank those uh, fire keepers for keeping that fire going. And I also wanted to thank those uh, people that sang to the sun this morning. Uh, that's what we say, we're, we sing to the sun. And that's what I, I wanted to thank those people for doing that as well. Uh, yesterday was a real beautiful day. So yesterday I had the opportunity to sit in that lodge yesterday and uh, it was a uh, one way that's a beautiful lodge there that was uh, that was uh, constructed on St Mary's Island so nui mi medewajik mr najwan meanwhile ge nick sant martina meanwhile dan sanna lisa so again, I want to thank those people that made the actual lodge, that put that together, and then the ones that uh, uh, did the ceremony as well, and spoke for the water and spoke for the fire and that tobacco. Anyway, uh, I want to be able to share this screen. I hope I can. Yeah, okay. I'm, 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 it says I'm disabled from participating, I mean, uh, uh, from screen sharing. Anyway, Gibizindwa Bejika Ogema, Dean Sayers, Jagnashi Nakana. So, this uh, Dean Sayers, when he introduces himself, he says, Nabanego uh, Jing. And then I didn't catch the second part of his Nishnabe name. And then uh, our, our recent speaker there, uh, John Burroughs, Gigidons Nishnabe knows when. And he, he said that his Nishnabe name is Gigadons. Both of these fellows are named after chiefs of their, after their uh, ancestors. The, the one thing that I, I latched on to, this happened in Chiging as well. We have a, a family name there named Debaske. But in that Debaske family name, there's a, a, a chief that was named Oga. And this Oga, that means a pickerel, from time to time, People in that family have been named Oga. And uh, why this is important is this is how that person was remembered, what he had done for the people, for his people, and the extraordinary events that he had accomplished in his life. Similarly, uh, the, the Jesuit uh, had Jesuits recorded in their relations that they would have this big ceremony. Sometimes it was the Feast of the Dead, but other times it was uh, a naming ceremony. And then they would bestow that name onto 
the new generation, and then they would recite what that person had accomplished. So these are the ways that the people actually perpetuated not only the, the name and the accomplishments of the ancestors, but also the teachings that that name actually uh, has. Our names actually uh, have a song that go with them. And then uh, all of, uh, and that song is actually a short form or a short form or what we would call Cole's notes of the bigger teaching that that name perpetuates in the Nishnabe worldview, Nishnabe Bemadzwin, Nishnabe Kendaswin, Nishnabe Adzwin. So that's how it would uh, actually be perpetuated is these names are concepts and the, the songs of, of the name actually is a short form or shorthand for, for that whole teaching of that name. So there should be a name for Nabanegojing, Gigdons, and I know for a fact that there's a name, for, uh, a song, uh, sorry, a song for each of those. And I know for a fact that there's a song for that Gababamba Tot. Anyway, because uh, that old man that named me, he sang that song when he gave me that name. And I was on the way to trying to learn that song, but a guy in Geek Shkito see we can the Mawe Nagamwin. At that time, I didn't, I wasn't able to learn that song, fully learn that song. So I can't say that I carry it, uh, that song. Anyway, that's when, we, when we're, I'm listening to Sharon talk about this rekindling and that it isn't a one-day process, that it's actually a long-term plan. Uh, I, I see that when we learn these songs in a traditional manner, that you actually do these offerings, you present those cloth and uh, the tobacco, and then you have repeated visits. The old man that named me, he actually forbid us from writing down those words and also forbid us recording. So we actually had to go see him, visit him, and uh, and uh, do all this. Anyway, uh, I've been enabled here. So I wanted to talk a bit about, uh, like I mentioned yesterday, yesterday, optical gi minagi jikat mampi bauting. Gike gike gyotase we de dick make minish minishing. I took time yesterday to actually walk around the Whitefish Island. Optogoganaj one way minishain. This little island is uh, beautiful. Uh, and it was a nice walk, and I just wanted to kind of ground myself in the in the area again. And of, of course, like uh, I've taken the time through years to to listen to elders, but also I've also read the extensive reading in, in archival collections. And many of you people will know this is uh, the, the chief who actually was a pr pr principal uh some may say agitator at that time, but also a, a strong advocate at that time to actually ensure that there was a treaty here. And it was due to the actions of this man, as well as his son-in-law, Nabanego Jing, that actually there was, uh, that there, that were actually gathering here, uh, commemorating this actual treaty. Anyway, if he didn't, him and his son-in-law didn't do what they did, there likely wouldn't be a treaty here. Uh, one of the, this is one of my favorite quotes, and then he says here that the great master of life gave us pipes and wampum for the purpose of conveying our ideas from man to man. I return great uh, return thanks to the great spirit that made me, and to my great father, the king who supports me. What he promised our forefathers, he continues to perform. So, like I said, I walked around that uh, that island. But this uh, Lake Superior in our story, Nishnabe An Sokan, Kche An Sokan Mandao, and this is a big story, but I'm just going to touch on it briefly. That this Kchigame was, uh, there was two houses uh, uh, for beavers, and on that Whitefish Island yesterday, Ngi Wabandan Gabakogan, Amik Gabakogan. Yesterday, I saw on Whitefish Island uh, uh, two beaver dams, uh, but I didn't see the beaver. But anyway, there's two beaver houses, the Mikwij, they call it. And uh, one was this island called uh, Minong, Isle Royale, as well as Mishapakatan Island. 
And then this giant beaver made this dam at the, what is now here called Sault Ste. Marie. But here, this was also a place that they now call Gross Cap. And it's on your, uh, it's on this map here. It's go, you go west. And I had just read of this in a, in a book called Ojibwe Texts that were collected by uh, William Jones, but he spoke to a number of people, one being Beijing uh, Nishnabekwe, Marie Saret Gijin Kaza. This lady was named Marie Sarette, and she told a couple of stories, and she was from Sault Ste. Marie. But one of the other fellows was uh, John Benesik. This other storyteller was named John Benesik, and he told this story. And it was about our, our great uncle, but here he says that... Uh, he, Nanabush was really mad at his grandmother, and in this telling, it's his grandmother that is called a makaki, makaki, uh, mindimwe. So when the, he told the old lady to watch the dam because he was going to go jump on those beaver houses and chase that beaver out because the beaver was menacing, this giant beaver was menacing the Anishinaabek. Anyway, he jumps on those houses and he says, uh, whistle when that beaver is coming. So here the old lady is whistling away. And he says, uh, make sure you block him. Anyway, Nana Bush arrives. Me with pi gi nidoko shingo de bao thing. That beaver, Jajago gi gi gijibwe. So this beaver had fled and he he actually left by then. And he smashed through this, uh, this dam, his own dam. And all these mountains, I mean, uh, all these little islands, that's the debris of that uh, that dam. Anyway, Nanabush is furious, and then he ends up uh, grabbing his grandmother, and here's what he, he ends up throwing her against this rock, and that's the, the blood of his grandmother in this telling uh, at this gro- what's called gross cap now. But in Nishnabe Mong, it's called a makaki wab kong. Makaki wabik means a toad uh, mountain, toad, stu- uh, toad mountain or a toad, uh, toad rock. So that's what, according to this story, that's what it was called. And um, this is another version of that same story. And here, this is a picture I took just yesterday as I walked along uh, Whitefish Island. And these are the actual rapids there. I, I just found it uh, beautiful there. And it's actually, there's Meskwak. Uh, there's red earth there all along that trail. You walk along that trail, your, your shoes will pick up all this uh, red, red sand. So in, in this version, Agnes Kotler says that Nana Bush's wife was named Makki Wabik, and that it was her that was actually uh, stationed at the dam while Nana Bush went to try and uh, chase these beavers out. Anyway, the beaver, she says, the beaver came tumbling down or up the lake. She called to her husband that the bridge was breaking. He did not hear her, so the dam broke and the stones washed down a good piece by force of water. This is what causes the rapids now. Nana Bojo returned. He was so enraged at finding the bridge broken, he dragged his wife to the place which is now called Gross Cap. He took one step because he could make himself into a giant in these stories. Eh? And there threw her by the hair into the water. As he did so, he remarked that as long as the world lasted, this place should be called Makkiwabik, toad uh, or frog, frog rock. Anyway, I, I, went, I got the chance to go there to that. Uh, I've been looking for that place as well. So uh, one of the things I've been trying to do is find where all these places are in these uh, stories, on Sokkaning, where all these places are mentioned. And I tried to go there to put some Sema down. Uh, uh, I went there this, this past spring. Well, gross captain, gi ba jao de, gi bigit nako Sema. So here, this is another story that I came across, and it was written by, uh, it, this was collected by William Jones, but the fellow's name was William Cabeose. And he says, this is the origin of the Ojibwe, and that the story is told of a crane that flew about over the earth before coming to Lake Superior. Flying everywhere over the lake, he came to the Sioux. He saw some herring there, caught them, and ate them as food. He fell asleep and dreamed of a woman. In the dream, he gave her a fish to eat. He woke and found a woman lying with him. He and she lived together. They hunted deer. And he says, and from that pair came the Ojibwe people. 
They used the flesh for food. And a home was made on the south shore of the rapids, and it was called Bawating. This was the first town that was founded by the crane, and it became the center of the Ojibwe nation and power. The head chief of all the Ojibwe's lived at this place. His clan was Crane, a Jijok. So this again is, a, this William Kabeose had a younger brother named George Kabeose. And this is the why I brought up those names at the beginning is because uh, here in that article, you see it written at the bottom of the thing. This is the reference, uh, Ojibwe Tales from the North Shore of Lake Superior. The Wagane is George Kabeose. These, uh, and he recorded a number of other names of his siblings who had uh, had names that been passed down from their ancestors. These ones stand in the 18th generation. The Guagane, the chief after whom George is named, was chief when America and England were at war. He went to Niagara at the time and made an agreement with England. England promised to grant presents to his people every year till the end of time. A round medal was given him, the circular object denoting that the friendship would never end. So I was glad to hear uh, uh, Sharon uh, mention this about the, the crown and the importance of uh, having that relationship with the crown. And uh, I wanted to stress while, while we're here at Baoting that the, the Ojibwe people here at Baoting were actually at the Treaty of Niagara. So here, this is, of course, uh, Sir William Johnson, who would, would be uh, the superintendent of British North America, Indian Affairs for British North America. And this is what he, he had said at that time. Brothers of the Western nations, I desire you'll take fast hold of the same and never let it slip, meaning the covenant chain wampum belt. To which end, I desire that after you have shown this belt to all nations, you will fix one end of it with the Chippewas at St. Mary's, whilst the other end remains at my house. Then he gave medals to the chiefs at Niagara, the 31st of July, 1764. So you see that one belt there above is a, there were many iterations of this belt. And I'll, I'll show in a later slide how this belt is depicted a number of different times through time. So this is the belt that you have in front of you in the, in the machine shop there at that building. But here, this is a, a, the, the lawyer, Paul Williams compiled this list and he said that the, this is below is the 24 nations belt, and we could also call it the eternal, the promise of eternal presence, and that's what was referred to by Gabeose. Uh, anyway, here you see that the Western Confederacy there's 12, and then the Eastern Confederacy there's 12. So the Eastern and Western Confederacy of nations that tied their towels by the strong cord of friendship, meaning the uh, covenant chain and tied themselves to the British, which is represented by the rock at Quebec. I mean, the, uh, the, the ship there that's full of presents, but also that's the rock of Quebec, meaning Turtle Island there as well. Anyway, you see uh, uh, there's Chippewas and uh, what they called Tacoma ones, Odawas, Hurons, Menominees, Winnebago's, Algonquins, Sauk, Nipissings, Fox, and Cree. I wanted to... Uh, uh, I listened to Francis Kavanaugh yesterday in the that he he was spoke in the uh, in the lodge yesterday and he says I'm 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 really happy to see your your treaties here he said and he pointed to the wampum belts. So I wanted to just say to, I didn't get a chance to catch up with uh, Ogichita yesterday, but I just wanted to say to them that this uh, word Tokomawan actually is the Cree word for uh, Lake of the Woods. So these people actually, the, the people of uh, Lake of the Woods area ha actually had come down to Niagara in 1764 and they participated in it. So this isn't just our treaty, this is actually theirs as well. Uh, I wanted to just share that with him. So here's an, an enumeration. Of course, they didn't take a, a total enumeration, but here some are, are some of the Chippewa chiefs, Jawanagabo, and to me, I understand that to be standing in the south. Kagageose, that could be Kagageose, meaning forever flying about. And then the Zongibi, Zongibi, I don't know what that would be. Giotasin, I understand that to mean he's he's flying flying around. 
Wabage Kek, a white, white hawk. And then the Odawa chiefs there. Anyway, on their on the left right part of the screen, there's uh, uh, William Jones. Uh, I mean, uh, William Johnson had put uh, enumerated these tribes, and he gave these numbers, but he didn't do a total enumeration. And it was the Menominee. He said there were 99 of them there, and the Jibwe's. That's how he spelt it. 71, and then there were 173 Odawa. And there were 16 Huron Wendat, and there were 27 Fox and Sock. I didn't bother listing all the, the uh, Haudenosaunee people that were enumerated there. Anyway, throughout his papers, he, he lists he lists not on that official correspondence, but throughout, and his he, he he records that Algonquins were there, the Cree were there, Nipissings, Potawatomi, the Kumawans, and the Mississaugas. So here, the I want to just show talk a bit about this medal as well. And you see that medal actually the clasp has a eagle wing. And now, of course, we use that as fans. And yesterday you would have seen some of the traditional people, the Medewajik, using that uh, when they talk. And then you see that pipe, it is a calumet pipe. But this, of course, is uh King George III on this uh on on this medal. And here this is what was said uh by uh, the Shage or Jashage, meaning uh, that he, they put crane, but actually a jash, Jashage means a heron. That means a heron, blue blue heron. And a Jijak is the crane. Anyway, the, the Komawan chief says, this pipe is sent by all our chiefs. We were obliged several times along the road to hoist, hoist up this pipe in our canoe to prevent our being scratched on our way. We now leave it here with you and that it may be used whenever any of our people come here. Then they think of the friendship subsisting between them and the English. So I just, again, I, I wanted to show this to Gary Allen and uh, uh, Okichita, Francis uh, Kavanaugh, and the uh, people of Treaty 3, that they are actually are par part of this uh, 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 covenant chain as well. So on your left is a picture of the... Uh, of Sir William Johnson's certificate, uh, of the, the image that's on there, there's actually words as well. I just focused in on that. And that was called Kinwachchigan. Now that means a, a mark or a blaze on a tree. Kinwachchigan is uh, one of the ways we would say a medal. So again, like I said, that uh, on the July 31st, uh, Sir William Johnson gave these medals. And then he exhorted them to look at them often in order to remind them of their engagements. And again, this is how they talked. Uh, they didn't say that this is the, the uh, treaty clauses. You will look at this medal and remember treaty clause uh, subsection, whatever. It, it didn't work like that. It's a, it was a mnemonic system that they engaged in. And like what Sharon had mentioned earlier, you look at these wampum belts as well as these medals and uh, how they actually... Uh, are are emerging emerging between two uh, systems of knowledge, and that's what this is this is about. So, to me, I want to uh, emphasize to people how important these metals are, and how our ancestors actually looked at these metals. They were manipulated later on, but initially, that these were reminders of the treaty. So, at the bottom, this is a, a quote from uh, one of the Ojibwe chiefs, and he says, "Brother, we." We have thought of what you have said and greatly approve of the same. We are determined to follow your advice for the good of our people, and we shall never swerve from our engagements. But look at the medals you have given us every morning. And every morning, of course, is, a, is also a, an allegory to every spring, and it's also an allusion to uh, uh, receiving the presents every year. But again, they, they talk about fixing their gaze on that medal. And remember that Gebeo said talked about the metal being round, having no beginning or no end. And so this is his brother George Gebeo said, who is from Garden River, uh, and he he had written this, and he said that the British at that time had told the Nishnabe, the Ojibwe Nishnabe, at Niagara. He said, "My agreement will be as good as when you arise in the bright spring morning, as you see the sun arising over the hills like a big fire to warm ourselves." Thus my promise will be as good as the sun and it will last as long as it will arise and set. And I will be as your father and I will take care of you as a father takes care of his loved children. And remember that I've promised you an everlasting friendship. The envoy then took out a medal and said, 
you all see this metal is round. It has no end. Then taking the chief by the hand said, I take you forever to be my child. There's a lot in there that I don't have time to talk about just in this little speech. There's a lot in that little speech to talk about about our treaty relationship and how it's a mnemonic uh, device that gets expanded upon to talk about our treaty relationship. So these are uh, these are different sizes of medals that were given through the years. And again, there's different ways, different words that the, the our, our ancestors used to talk about this. Kikinwach Jeon and Napkwagan, Biopkons, and Kikinwach Chagan. Those are the words used in Nishnabe for to describe uh, what this is. And recently we, we had a medal here. This was by Chief Egomene, who I listed earlier in the earlier slide as an Odawa chief who was uh, sent down to Niagara. And this, this unfortunately, this medal and certificate actually uh, was just auctioned off like about 10 years ago. But on the back of this certificate, it actually showed that it was given to Egumene, then it went passed down to his son. And then the Indian agent named Thomas Gummersall Anderson uh, verified that. And uh, and it was given to, it ended up in Sagamuk, this uh, this medal by uh, Anam Sin, was the chief. And Anam Sin, of course, uh, actually signed the 1850 treaty. So we have, a. am trying to show here that we have a, a direct link to the, the Treaty of Niagara and to Robinson Huron Treaty of 1850 by the signatories that participated, but also how it was uh, coded in these medals and certificates as well. Anyway, this medal ended up getting into the hands of uh, Gabriel Asinabe, as well as a fellow named uh, Bitasge. And then he used this effectively, this medal and certificate, when he moved to Zgamuk to actually get on the uh, Robinson Huron Treaty annuity list. Anyway, that's another bigger story to talk about. So uh, I want to talk a bit, mentioned, emphasize that these, this medal and this belt, actually for us, Nishnabe people, we look at this as our independence and it's about our being allies. And we, we call, our ancestors call this sacred a sacred friendship. Chetwa which can end the wind. That's what they, it was called. So we weren't looked at as subjects. And then also this belt sometimes gets talked about as just being allies and nation to nation relationship, but it actually is a codification of what we would, what lawyers call Aboriginal title and our land ownership. But also it's, a, it's about our protection. And if you read, there's a bigger story here about uh, the Royal Proclamation and this belt after as well. And then uh, it, they talk about it as protection. Our ancestors use the word protection, but now in legalese, this of course is called fiduciary responsibility. And then of course they called it support, and our ancestors called this warmth. And that's the warmth is a is a metaphor or an allegory for the uh, for the provision of the presence around the sacred fire or the council fire. And it also was as payment for past services during the American Revolution as well as the War of 1812. The, our chiefs ended up using this in the 1880s for, to press their claims uh, for redress of the hunting and fishing and timber usage. Anyway, we mentioned that this is a living treaty, and these are different iterations of the covenant chain that were, were given by the British to the Western Confederacy, to the Anishinaabe and others. Uh, I saw also on that table yesterday in Giwamdan Bejik Manda Migis Pekkan. I saw this one. We call it the Pledge of the Crown, and it's, it's the the original is actually in the possession of the uh, Six Nations, the Haudenosaunee. Right now, they repatriated it, but it was actually given to all the nations that participated on the side of the British during the War of 1812. So this is the ninth article uh, of the Treaty of Ghent, and that they they said that they were. The USA will put an end to hostilities with all tribes and nations of Indians with whom they may be at war, uh, and to restore such tribes and nations respectively all the positions, rights, possessions, rights, and privileges which they may have enjoyed or been entitled to in 1811 previous to such hostilities. This, of course, again, why I'm bringing this up is actually just refers to uh, 
in, in our perspective, the Jade Treaty. And some of you may know that the Jade Treaty, the gov- official can- Canadian government position is that uh, we aren't signatories to it. We're just included as a clause in it. Anyway, this wampum belt, in my uh, interpretation, shows that we are part- participants of that as well. And that that Jade Treaty uh, uh, enforces our right to that. So this is what is called the Pledge of the Crown. And I learned a lot from the, this, this fellow here. His name is Rick Hill. He's a Tuscarora. And he's a very knowledgeable man. If you ever get the chance to listen to him uh, and or uh, uh, search him up on U- uh, YouTube. Anyway, this is actually the speech that William Klaus, that was the, the fellow that was pictured earlier. Uh, he says to all of us at the Burlington Heights in April of 1815, I'm further instructed to inform you that in making peace with the government of the USA, your interests were not neglected, nor would peace have been made with them had they not consented to include you in the treaty, which they at first refused to listen to. I will now repeat to you one of the articles of the Treaty of Peace, which secures you to you the peaceable possession of all the country which you, quote, possessed before the late war, and the road is now open and free for you to pass and repass without interruption to restore such tribes and nations respectively all the rights, possession, and privileges which they may have enjoyed or been entitled to in 1811 previous to such hostilities. The one point that I want to make why that's highlighted is that actual phrase, the the road is now open and free for you to pass and repass, is actually not in the Treaty uh, of of Ghent. But he told us that and that's what's encoded in that wampum belt, in the talk of that wampum belt. And that's why this belt is important uh, uh, for us uh, Indigenous people uh, that allied themselves during the War of 1812, that this actually marks our, our uh, aff- affirmation of the Jade Treaty, uh, being able to cross and to pass and repass uh, the, the, the boundary. So this again is Jaguar uh, Cons. And he says, Father, we salute you. We beg of you to believe what we say. For though we cannot put down our thoughts on paper as you, our wampums and the records of our old men are as undying as your writings, and they do not deceive. That's a, that's my other second favorite quote by Jaguar Cons. Anyway, uh, I'm, I know I'm close to time or over time, but I was told that I had 45 minutes. That's why this thing is taking longer than uh than uh, half an hour. So this is uh, Jaguar Conce's son, uh, Agusta, Gishtin, we would say, Gishtin. Anyway, there was a petition, the Grand Council had uh, had written a petition in 1869 in Garden River, and then it was forwarded to Manitoulin in Little Current in 1870. But they complained about commissioners coming to ask them to surrender the reserves. And they also complained again, and remember, remember that I talked about this they actually, the petition talked about that they had the wampum in front of them while they were gathered. And they complained about the Game and Fishery Act and that they were getting fined and imprisoned, contrary to what the treaty said. And then also that they uh, that they wanted to remove wood and any other stuff uh, to sell, but they, they also got, uh, they were punished for doing so. And that the Gradual Enfranchisement Act does not suit us, though some clauses are suitable. And they also took this opportunity in this petition to say that the islands in the North Shore of Georgian Bay and Lake Huron were not properly surrendered. So you see, but the actual thing that they started off with that is they said that that sacred friendship that we entered into with the with the crown doesn't seem to be as sacred as it was when it was first made. And uh, they said we have the, the wampum in front of us right now. And he says, we, we, we've smoked the pipe amongst ourselves and we extend it to you to actually uh, have you uh, reaffirm the sacredness of that friendship. So again, then they had another uh, uh, grand council, general. they called it General Indian Council back then at Garden River in 1879. And this is what they wrote. They said, they were told by their great king, he would not always live to look after them and their rights, that after his decease, Efforts might be made by evil disposed persons to deprive them of their presence. And if they were ever so unfortunate as to lose them, all they would have to do would be to present the treaty and the medal, which I give them to my successor in the throne of England, 
and both the covenant and the promise would be speedily and faithfully carried out and the presence restored to them. So I'm glad that Sharon Venn uh, remarked that this is going to be the uh, 70th anniversary of, uh, of uh, Queen Elizabeth coming up next year and that she recommended that the chiefs send a delegation. And when we had in 2015, we had a, 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 I mean, 2014, we had a commemoration of the Treaty of Niagara. We were trying to get people who had this medal still to, to come out to that commemoration. And if we had all these medals and the, the hereditary chiefs come out with that, it would be interesting to send this delegation to, to England with these medals and the, this wampum belt to go over and to try and get this reaffirmed and to get those presents restored because the presents actually are that cloth offering. And every time they do, came for around the council fire to us, they actually burnt that tobacco and they gave us that tobacco and we smoked the pipe. And anyway, there's uh, uh, I want to hear what Aaron has to say as well. These are, of course, three handsome fellows. And they all have those medals, their, their medals for serving during the war. But they also, you'll notice that Pega Magabo has this uh, Queen Victoria medal. Uh, and, uh, and this is David Miguance, and he has uh, me, the medal that Miguance was given for fighting during the War of 1812. And this is John Askin, who is a descendant of uh, Jaguacons, and he, he's wearing those three, three medals that uh, were awarded to Jaguacons, Chief Jaguacons. Anyway, me um, and is in the mech and uh, apologize to Aaron if I went over time. I wasn't able to really keep, it's hard to keep track of time on this thing uh, while, while, uh, while talking and trying to go fast. Anyway, me is in the mech, uh, 